she needs no introduction actually, but for those of you that are not in England, who may not know her so well, she is absolutely a, a bubbly, dynamic, wonderful Savak. I've known her for so many years. Just seeing her makes me, I'm just seeing her now makes my heart full of joy. She serves so sweetly and she's one of the primary, I was gonna say she's one of the primary gopis, she's one of the primary gungas um, who do such an incredible savor. Um, so not just the quantity of the savor, but the beautiful sweet mood of the savor. They always make everybody feel so welcome. They've always made me feel so welcome since they started in, what was it, 2001. Um, I can't remember a time when I didn't know Lalita. She feels like she's been in my life since, uh, since I can remember. And um, she's a little bit shy. The best ones are always shy. So let's uh, give her a lot of support with our two ears for, her Shravan, for our, our Shravan to her Kirtan. I warmly, warmly welcome you, Didi. Thank you so much for agreeing to speak. I know sometimes you're a little reticent in doing that, but uh, you'll be proved totally wrong because I know everyone will love you, Harikata. <sighs> So welcome to Skegdes, to the Ganga Matters, to Alita, a warm welcome. I'll now stop talking and hand over to our beautiful Lalita, who will uh, share uh, her guitar from her heart. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and before I'm doing my obeisance, I just want to, um, to thank you for this op to opportunity um, to, um, yeah, even though I'm I'm not at all qualified or and as you know I'm not a eloquent speaker at all but still just you know you're giving us this I um, mean this opportunity to uh, engage my speech and my mind in remembering Shila Gurudev so I'm very grateful for this um, yeah um Om Agyanati Manandasya Gyanan Jala Salakaya Chakchumitani Natasmai Shi Guru Vedama Mukam Karuti Vachanam Pangum Dangayati Guru Yad Kripatam Maham Vande Shi Guru Nimitani Jai Shi Satchidan and Gold Hari Ki Jai Shi Something's happening there. Um, Shi Nitana Ram Prabhu Ki Jai Shi Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Um <coughs> So before speaking, I'd like to offer my obeisances to Shri Guru Pat Patma, Om Shukara Stotra Sata Shri Shumat Bhakti Vedanta, Shiva Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and also my obeisances to all um, the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis in our civic uh, succession. Lalita, there's, there's yeah. a lot of squeaking and, and noise at your end. I don't know if it's a mouse or another Ganga Mata, but can you see if you can? Uh, okay, maybe should I just bring this a bit closer? Um, we're just on the phone. Is there? Everybody is actually quiet. That's better. That's better. Much better. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Can, can you see Gurudev? Uh, yeah, totally. Can see him more than you, actually. You, yeah, you're perfect. You're actually perfectly in camera. Really good. Okay. Um, so I, I was so um, wanting. To remember uh, Gurudev, um, how he's, he was very, very um, merciful, uh, touching my life, as I, I guess um, all of Gurudev's disciples would um, maybe feel the same, that through his, his expertise, he was able uh, to um, steal all of our heart and in this way impart his divine knowledge you know, by hook and crook. Um, um, so he, 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 Shiguru is like um, like a fisherman, basically. I heard one time that he um, he puts this very nice and uh, delicious warm on the hook, and then he goes out um, to the pond, and the fish is happily thinking, "Oh, this is very nice. I want to have this warm." And as soon as he bites inside, then um, He's hooked into the hook, and it's just a question of time that he will be taken out of this water. Um, so this analogy is um, is is um, just there is a difference between guru and the fisherman. Is that the fisherman he is having um, bad intention? He wants to kill the, the fish, uh, whereas. Shri Guru, uh, he only has pure intentions for us, you know, by hook and crook, he's, he's taking us 
to this path and and to um love and beauty he's uh, he's um, he's trying to impart this um conception of pure love of god and so that we can imbibe that in our life so this is his mercy and i uh, can see in my own um, life how it was taken place that um i was one of those one of those that are not at all interested in god nor was i looking for anything i was just living my normal life and so it happens that one day when i um um came down the station and then i saw um um a person in this strange white clothes and um and I, there was just one one thought in my mind oh what a strange thing to, um, to do with your life just standing there in in front of the station and happily giving out some kind of books so therefore i stopped and i asked him uh i just have a question why why are you doing this with your life like i don't understand your motivation and uh, the devotee has answered something but um i wasn't really convinced so i thought okay that's it you know i'm going then he tried to give me a book but i was really interested he said oh everybody's giving a donation and i said no thank you i don't have money for this uh as i came home then um the same book actually was uh, on the table um in my living room uh, but i didn't actually take that as an indication for anything i was just thinking oh funny the same book um uh, at that time i was living with my friend and um he happened to meet the same devotee and got the book and he um he became very inspired about krishna consciousness so in this way like day and night he would try to talk you know about krishna to me but i was just basically ignoring that you know i wasn't really interested um so much so that we came to the point of fighting um and the middle of the fight screaming and throwing things around um he was saying to me that oh so if you don't believe in god then who do you believe in and that was very challenging statement for me was i for the first time i had to think about that that i did not have any belief um and it was very kind of it was like my word was breaking down so i um i just um started crying basically and um uh, and i took i said okay then give me the book but even then you know even then when i was challenged and i started reading i didn't i wasn't really convinced you know i, I wasn't feeling any connection and i and i forgot about that soon and it was just um good if then basically had to pull out another trick on me and and he um he um um somehow that he arranged for me to go to the temple um at that time actually i was living quite a tamastic life i um i would get up maybe like at 4 o'clock at the, <laughs> in the afternoon <laughs> and uh and basically have a smoke burst <laughs> and then um chill maybe for 2 hours and then i would be like rolling down the stairs maybe around 6 or 7 o'clock in in the evening and I go to the cave up shop <laughs> and at my my breakfast while the the sun was setting basically so that was kind of my condition and on that day i managed to um, to get up early basically it was early afternoon and uh, that, but there was nothing to smoke so my friend said oh let's go i i know a, a dealer in a, a new dealer in another boro so um so i thought okay no problem i go uh, then i'm going and he said oh but before going there i just need to stop at the temple so i said okay you can go in the temple i will stay outside and wait you know i was really interested So I was waiting outside while waiting there um I just had a very strange thought I was looking at um in the afternoon sun everybody was just like rushing by 
And I was thinking, oh, everybody's just like really busy doing something, but actually there's no purpose in what they're doing. You know, how strange this life is. Uh, as I was having this thought, then um, the door opened and, and one gentleman in white cloth, you know, came out and he said, oh, please come in. Why are you sitting here outside? And because he was so friendly, so I uh, had to be polite. So I decided to come in. And, and I think it was like a, Buddha was giving some magic or some mystic on me. Because as soon as I, I stepped in, it felt to me like stepping in another universe. Um, I thought, wow, it's like a hole in the universe. Um, this time, the time seemed to be stopping. Like, you know, outside everything was like rushing. And then I stepped in this space and it was just like still and it's so magical and beautiful. And, and yeah, in this way, basically, he captured my interest and I kept coming. But I didn't actually know much about Gurudev yet. It was just like, you know, I love the singing, I love the dancing, I love the Hare Krishna people, and I definitely love the, the food. You know, I'd like fast the whole Sunday to make sure that I'm so hungry that I can eat as much as I can. Um, yeah, because they, you know, after they give out the prasada and then they would come again and again and again, and there's just like, you can have as much as you want, like, uh, and then sweet so much. So I, I really love that part. Um, yeah, so then uh, it happened that one day they, um, they said, oh, we're going to a festival in Italy. Would you like to come? And I, I was saying, um, yeah, why not? I've never been in Italy, so why not? And so I went to this festival. It was very beautiful and nice, but I didn't manage to make a connection with Gurudev yet. Um, though still he was very merciful and gave me initiation. And I remember that my only thought was after this festival, oh, funny, now I also have a name like them, like a strange Hare Krishna name. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was then the following year um, that the devotees again invited me and said, oh, we go into a festival in um, India. Would you like to come? And I was uh, thinking, oh, yes, India. I've never been in India. I should come there. So in this way, before I knew, I was in the middle of Shinavadip and Parikama. And it was just amazing, ecstatic, and um, just having a lot of fun. And um, I remember one lecture, like one, two sentences I heard from the, from the lecture was that, oh, it's because our heart is so hard like a thunderbolt and because of all the offenses, therefore we are unable to see the saintly persons. So I, yeah, I, I was quite simple hearted at that time. And I thought, oh, I haven't seen any saints in a saintly person in my life it must be my heart it's very hard so I thought oh maybe I should just pray whoever is up there so I started praying thinking oh please help me I want to see the saintly person and then Gurudev is, 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 is as if like Gurudev lifted like a curtain for me and um, I was all of a sudden like the next day basically after my prayer I was able to see like like everybody's aura and I could see, like, especially the Vaishnavas, they were like glowing, like super, super glowing. And, um, and I thought to myself, oh my God, there's so many saints here. <laughs> um, and especially Sri Gurudev, he was like, he was um, not just glowing, he was all per pervasive. His, his energy was so strong that, that it was like um, beams basically coming out of his transcendental body. And it was uh, you know, filling the whole of the Navadip, um, uh, the whole, actually Yashoda Nandan Hall. Uh, um, the, that hall in Kesha Shri Goliamat, the temple, would, uh, would uh, give class there. And when he entered, his, his presence was so strong. Uh, I, I could perceive it like, like, like beams, you know going to every corner. So in, in this way, mystical way, basically, Gurudev was, was capturing my heart. And um, it was, um, but I, you know, and, and at that Parikama, I also took initiation, you know, Diksha initiation. 
Just gonna check the time. Uh, You're doing great because we we started we started quite late, so crack on, no problem. Okay, so um, and yeah, I was actually you know about this initiation. I was very enthusiastic, you know. Uh, it, like Gurdjieff just took me basically so much that you know I remember the the um, the last day of Parikrama when I just uh, woke woke up opened my my eyes and I heard I heard uh, one devotee saying Oh Gurdjieff is giving um, the last initiation today so I, I just I felt like I have to have the initiation so I just like ran out yeah you know, forced I took a shower went I ran out bought some fruits you know and went with my plate to Gurudev's house um, and all the devotees already you know I was late all the devotees already went upstairs and so I was like about to also go upstairs then it was actually um, Shupat Sajan Maharaj who was that there. He came and he said, um, hey, where are you going? And I was saying, oh, um, I'm go going to take initiation. <laughs> and then Maharaj said, oh, so uh, who's um, recommending you? <laughs> so I was saying, well, no one. <laughs> uh, he said, oh, okay. So uh, do you chant 16 rounds? <laughs> I was thinking, oh, uh, yes, I'm chanting from now. <laughs> <laughs> then um, he said, are you taking into intoxication? And I was thinking, hmm, that's a tricky one. I was saying, well, I didn't take anything since I'm on this parikrama. So I said, mm, no, <laughs> like I, I wouldn't really lie. I thought to myself, if I say it like that. Then uh, Maharaj is saying, well, you're taking quite long yeah, to answer this. So I, I think you're not ready. Um, it's better you come back later. But I had just like this burning desire, you know, um, to be, ex yeah, to, 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 to accept Gurudev basically in my life. So, uh, uh, and I was just like thinking, oh, no, 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 I really need to go there. Then just at that time, um, Brajana Prabhu came down and he said, oh, anyone else for initiation <laughs> then that was like my opportunity i was saying yes me 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 i'm i'm here and then and then he said then hurry up and this is where i just ran upstairs and i got my initiation so uh, that was quite fun you know how that was arranged and that basically that diksha initiation completely changed my life in many many ways um yeah, it was, um, but still, I didn't get the opportunity to um, speak with Gurudev yet. It was just the following festival in Holland um, that at the end of the festival, I decided, oh, maybe I should go and um, say goodbye to Shiva Gurudev. So on the way, to, it, it was like a campsite there. So on the way to his house, I saw some flowers and I thought, oh, maybe I should give him a present given something so i decided to collect the flowers and um and then, then i took my flowers i was ready to go and see my good dave and i went there and um good dave um was already in the car ready to go there was many many devotees around him you know and the car was driving about to drive off or like rolling off already and the the, the his window screen line was scrolling up so i was like oh no so i was like push myself through the devotees and i stand in front of him and then the windows came down again yeah, that was really cool and he looked at me and i just took my flowers and said good day for you and he was just so charming he just looked at me with his beautiful eyes and he said for me <laughs> or something like that like for me very good that's what he said so that was yeah he just in that way he just completely took me um and um uh, yeah the, the you know the point i'm saying all this is that um how would it was so expert in taking the hearts of all his disciples it, it doesn't matter if you're young or old if you've been a devotee for your whole life or just came in like me he he was able to capture everyone because um 
yeah, I, I was new, so I, I didn't know really. I didn't know who he was. I didn't know what he came to give. I didn't know, you know, even the definition of pure bhakti. I didn't know what what is sadhan, and I didn't know what is bhajan. I didn't know what it means to walk on this path of self-realization. But all I actually knew was that, you know, that interaction with Sri Gurudev, his beautiful twinkling eyes, his his warm sm smile, and um, yeah, that you know that would give enough motivation to come in front of him and listen to his message. Um, um, yeah, and uh, yeah, what I wanted to say is, it's it's not that I've realized, you know my spiritual identity now or I have any you know real understanding of sadhana and bhajan yet but as um as the time is, is passing by and I, I get the opportunity to associate with the devotees and uh, and uh, especially with our Vaishnavas then I do feel a, a sense of gratitude growing you know, within my heart so yeah how much time do i have okay, okay. so um yeah so she got to live key jai but <laughs> uh, yeah and then who said that i shouldn't just say guru is key jai <laughs> so um yeah so i wanted to um also um remember that uh, she good was not just expert in stealing hearts. Um, he was also um, the embodiment of the truth. He was, he was um, so strong in upholding the truth. He, um, as, as we know, Krishna is the supreme absolute truth. So his devotees who are always engaged in glorifying him, they are um, never fearful in establishing the truth. And Gurudev was um, one of the topmost example of this, in how in his own manifested pastimes, we could see you know, uh, how he was always um, very strong about establishing the truth. Mm -hmm. um, so um, for example, Um, Gurudev was, was um, broadly propagating and, and, um, and giving um, the goal and the aspiration of our Gaudiya Vaishnavas to all that came in contact with him. Everybody would know if you are the most eloquent speaker or just a small child, everybody would be able to say, yes, in our line, we aspire for Radha Dasyam. And that is the service to the divine couple, Shri Shri Radha Krishna, with a one-pointed nishta towards Srimati Radhika. Um, everybody would be able to say that, basically. Um, this is not something that is very common, you know, and 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 broadly given in even by other acharyas. Even Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur himself, he said um, at the time before he departed from the, his uh, manifested pastimes that he regretted that he spent so much time cutting the jungles of misconceptions um, and he did not have enough time to um, establish his innermost desires. So where maybe other acharyas um, were um, holding themselves back, um, of course, you know, because of they all have all their transcendental reasons to do so. But Srila Gurudev, he was so um, boldly and, and, and freely breaking the dam and, and giving this message to 
all and all. And this was his yeah, adherence to the truth. Um, another example is um, we see that um, following the, the instruction of his guru, Chila Bhakti Kagyan Keshava Goswami Maharaj, then um, Shiva Gurudev um, would reside in Mathura and in the mud there, uh, taking care of the mud and uh, yeah, and and preaching also. Um, the as we know, the um, Mathura is a place of opulence and and um, Dwakadish Krishna or Mathurish Krishna is prominent, isn't it? Um, Krishna is there, but not that Rajendra Nanan Krishna that we know. Um, and and that concept is of of course very strong there. The Mathura Vasa Vasis are very very proud of their Devaki Nandan Krishna. Um, so therefore, it was not at all easy, you know, to preach in Mathura. Uh, in fact, there was a lot of opposition. But Shigurev, through his charm and expertise, he was able to um, conquer the hearts of so many Mathura Vasis, thousands, and 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 um, change their faith in um, one pointed service to Shimati Radhika. So such was his contribution and his adherence to the truth. Um, another example would be, um, I think, um, another example. Oh yes, so his Shila Gurev's preaching in the West. So following um, the the instruction of Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj um, to um, to help and nourish his disciples, then Shila Gurudev um, started his worldwide preaching in the West from 1996. Um, and, um, and he was very clearly helping the devotees understand the concept of the Guru Parampara, of the Bhagavad Guru Parampara, and especially in um, glorifying Srila Prabhupada by um, and by giving the understanding that the topmost guru is the topmost servant, that the guru tattva means that um, that uh, the guru is the perfect disciple or the, the perfect servant of his guru. So in this way, Srila Gurudev would glorify Srila Prabhupada you know, by establishing that he belongs to this guru parampara, that he is you know, the topmost disciple and therefore he's the topmost guru. Um, so um, many, many devotees, Srila mm, Prabhupada's disciples were very inspired you know, by Guru's association, especially because of their long, long um, separation from Srila Prabhupada. Um, they felt very, very enlightened. But there are also others that could not understand Srila Gurudev's message. They felt um, they, they, they felt maybe misunderstood and started to uh, develop doubts in Srila Gurudev. So in this way, um, there was a lot of also opposition to Srila Gurudev's preaching in the West, you know, even to the point that he was banned you know, to um, the devotee community or devotee society that Srila Prabhupada was establishing. But Srila Gurudev was not at all um, faced or how you say that, uh, affected by that. Um, in fact, he continued to give his mercy 
to all, especially to those who, um, who, who would come to him. Mm, yeah, so another example uh, that comes into my mind is um, Sheila Gudev's the event of him leaving Shri Gaudiya, uh, Devananda Gaudiya Mat. Um, so when Sheila Bhangusan Maharaj was um, departing from this material world, uh, Shri Gurudev was not present in Sri Navadip Dam. When he heard, uh, he got the message on the news, then um, he made arrangement to come by train as, as, as quick as possible so that he, uh, he would arrive the next day to perform the um, Samadhi ceremony of Srila Maharaj. But um, unfortunately, when he arrived um, in Navadrip the next day, those in the position of management already has taken um, the Sam Samari ceremony of Srila Bhavangusama Maharaj the night before, which is not really an auspicious time. So when facing this incident, Srila Gurudev was enraged and um, he left. He left Sri uh, Devananda Gaudiamat um, and those who had faith in him, strong faith in him, they also left with him. In this way, in 2004, um, Srila Gurudev's Navadip Dam Parikrama was held in Vrindavan and um, through the contribution of Sri Gurudev's prominent disciples, um, they were able to purchase a piece of land in Koladrip, uh, when then from 2005, Shina, Shina Gude, Parikrama was held there, which we all know as Shri Keshav Shri Gaudiamat. So this event shows me um, again how bold and strong and uh, Gurudev was about um, establishing the truth. It was not because you know uh, he was offended, because Gurudev was humble, very humble by nature. He would not take offense you know, towards himself, but it it was because. Uh, of this was this was an act of um, of um, how you say that of, of of selfish desires for position and 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 some sort of material gain. So when the truth is clouded by material desires and 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 uh, selfish gain and and when the truth is, is clouded by misconception, then we can see Gurudev would stand up like a, like a roaring lion and he would make his point very, very clear, basically. So, um, yeah, this is, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, remembering him like this, because I know for myself, it is very actually hard to establish the truth or to, even if I have heard the truth, it's, um, I, I am hesitating to even always speak it because um, I'm thinking, oh, what if I'm saying will, um, affect others, if, what if others don't like what I have to say, what uh, if it will, you know, it will challenge them and they will challenge me back. I really don't want to be challenged by anyone. I want to have a easy and quiet life, <laughs> isn't it? But um, so in this way, <laughs> I find myself sometimes just keeping it quiet or like half-heartedly 
uh, agreeing to to something that actually I don't well, I know that is not the truth. So um, this is my condition, but you can see how in his own life, uh, I mean, in his own manifested pastime, Chi Grave was uh, giving uh, so many examples of how, uh, how he was very, very strong about establishing the truth. Um, yeah. So did I did I meet the time already? <laughs> You've done brilliantly. There was no uh, no chance of you uh, not using up your full time. It's fantastic. <laughs> we we were a bit worried. Yeah, we had a chat, didn't we, Lali? To where I said, "Oh, don't don't just say Jai Gurudev, I love Gurudev, and disappear." But actually, uh, it sounds like you could go on for a couple of hours. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, anyway. Beautiful. So um, yes, yeah, so I just would like to take the opportunity to to um, to thank you again, um, and that um, yeah, even though I'm not at all qualified and not eloquent in any way, that uh, yeah, anyway, Gude is very kind, engaging me in um, yeah, my, my my crazy mind and my crazy speech in in remembering him. So. Beautiful. I think for me, the uh, the currency of eloquency is sincerity. And um, that's what spoke to me in volumes listening to you, Lalita. Um, I wrote down a few highlights, um, which I, we all have different highlights. But I think some of the things that struck me were, um, I love what you said about the hole in the universe. I thought that was really one of the very, very colors. Uh, Huh? That was the way Gurdjieff Willie really was touching me because yeah. you know it was not enough to challenge me by philosophical conclusions. I, I needed to, I needed that kind of sparkle, that kind of special mystic to, to yeah. be. Yeah. But I think that hole in the universe is something that's that can be present for us every day if we yeah. al allow it to. It's um. It's our, it's our realizing we're not the doers and leaving enough space um, and going at the right pace in the mode of goodness each day, being careful not to degrade into the mode of passion too much so that we are receptacles for Paramatma, receptacles for Gurudev's magic, receptacles for Nityananda's mercy, receptacles for grace to come into our hearts. We have to intentionally set our hearts in line with um, that deep sense of listening to what Gurudev wants us to do, rather than just always rushing around. Um, uh, it's very beautiful. Because you can't have those mystical experiences and, unless you're intentionally listening for them. So I, I, that really um, spoke to me. And I loved uh, hearing about all your, uh, how you love to eat and you fasted all day and. I'd say the Ganga plays and your dancing and stuff, <laughs> unbelievable. I'm, I mean, a, the Ganga play is, is a whole art form in itself where it would seem that almost no preparation can lead to the most spontaneous, brilliant um, spectacle. Um, you just never know what to expect with the Ganga play. You're kind of on the edge of your seats. <laughs> you're totally on the edge of your seats. I love it. And I, I love what you're saying about how Gurudev was so staunch for the truth, not for any desire for selfish prestige, but because that was the backbone of his teaching. And yet Gurudev had this amazing, has this amazing, amazing magical quality of being totally uncompromising on the truth, and yet so liberal and accommodating in his heart. It's, it's quite amazing. I think Prabhupada said, be like, um, what was I'm, I'm paraphrasing, it was like, be like a British general on one level, like, you know, in terms of discipline, but be like a Bengali mother in your heart. I'm, I'm misquoting him, it's a paraphrase, but Gurudev was, is so much like that. And what he, he's given us in terms of clarifying our goal, Radha Dasyam, that's why when I invoke, I always I always invoke that verse, Anya Blasta Sunyam Gyan Kamdiyana Vritam, because I think he said something like, you're not my devotee, you're not my disciple unless you know that verse. I, I think he said that. Or if he didn't, he certainly put the sannyasis through the 
through the through the washing machine every time there was a uh, every time there was a class because they had to stand up and repeat it and translate it. But establishing the goal is like something a real speciality of Gurudev that I don't see any other guru ha having established it in the same way he's done it and emphasized it and repeat it again and again and again. And what you said about breaking the dam, I've never thought of that actually because Nichiranga Prabhu obviously broke the dam in the sense that Mahaprabhu came to establish Mahabhav, but it was there was some block and it was Nichananda Prabhu who broke the dam and got Rumadrip and gave us that flowing mercy. But actually the establishment of Radhadasyam is like Gurudev has broken the dam again. So it's yeah. like a it's like that was a really interesting point. So thank you for your beautiful Harikata, that your wonderful Pushpanjali. We're very grateful. And I'm gonna now hand over to Yashodari who will probably say a few words on your sharing and move us to the next speaker. Hari Bol Didi, thank you so much. Hi, thanks, Hari Bol. Hari Bol, Dandava Pranams. Thank you, Lalita Didi. As always, amazing. I just miss you guys, actually. Since the Ganga Mothers are no longer in, in London, it's really like a hole within within London, actually. So I don't really think so. <laughs> it is, it is. And uh, you, for many years, you've, you've held the UK Sangha up, uh, you guys, and... You still do. You, you, we have a lot of love. It's just not the same. I just wish I could come home and uh, meet you guys and just chill out with you. But uh, what what you said about Srila Gurudev and he being so strong and, you know, he always used to emphasize that his daughter should be like that. And you guys really do represent that. The Ganga Matas do represent that strong lioness um, ness that Gurudev wanted in all of his daughters. And when you guys preach, it's, it's done with so much love and affection that it naturally it comes out. Uh, very strong and powerful because you hold Srila Gurudev's heart in the center. So thank you, Lalita Didi, for um, sharing some memories with us. I'm so glad that you did. And um, hopefully I'll be there. I was meant to be there this weekend, but... Because um, uh, uh, Kamala Didi and Sita Karani are in London. So I was like, um, okay. I'm uh, yeah, I, I understand that. <laughs> so I'll come. I'll come down when you're all together, hopefully, so that I can. Yeah, I'm for everything. Very well, and the what?